Hello everyone, this is Gaurav Jain from M&M Jain School of Architecture, Batch 2016-21 and uh, my thesis topic as given in the YouTube description is Roy Puram Railway Station Redevelopment. Now, as soon as I told this topic, many people in my own my own college mates had a doubt like what Roy Puram railway station, what are you going to design the railway station. So, first before getting into that, I would like to tell you why and how you have to choose a topic like this. Uh, basically, you have to choose your thesis topic in such a way that will bring in the scope of the project. It will not only uh, drives you or fascinates you to uh, get into the topic, but also that should be a proper scope, that should be a proper justification. And that's when I brought into the topic of uh, railway station because of two things. One is that personal aspect. I am a huge fan of trains. From my childhood, I've seen trains. I've uh, sat inside a railway station and seen the people coming in and getting out of the train, the different emotions inside the railway station. And uh, I had so much of craze that my own classmate in the college, she used to call me as a ferroeconologist. I was termed as a, I was called as a ferroeconologist, uh, a person who is a train enthusiast. So this was my personal aspect. In terms of design aspect, uh, a railway station acts as an urban market to a city. Now if you consider as a threshold, it acts as a threshold actually. Uh, threshold in Tamil we can say as a vasakal. Vasakal eprina, from one room to another, you are going through one threshold. The same way railway station acts as a threshold to a city. So you uh, travel from Chennai to Bangalore, you go through the railway station that acts as a threshold itself. And apart from that, why designing a railway station? Because uh, Right now in a current situation, there is a lack of proper circulation amongst inside the railway station. The pedestrian flow is not being considered properly and there should be a proper organization of spaces. So considering all this thing and narrow downing it and channelizing all my craze for the trains and uh, the design aspect everything, I thought of designing the railway station as a thesis topic. Now if in general in our college there is a rule that we have to take three topics for the synopsis. So basically my first topic was the Royapuram railway station. I will come in detail why did I choose Royapuram as a station and the uh, second topic was uh, Jain Vishwabharati Institute which was a campus designed for Jain monks and nuns and third topic was Market of India which was a commercial project. My keen interest was doing the railway station development project only and uh, through the synopsis uh, the major thing what I kept in mind was to justify my topic in such a way that that becomes a sure shot. So I brought in the site along with my synopsis to show the to show my professor that this uh, Royapuram railway station why I have brought it exactly. So if you see uh, once the synopsis is done the next thing what I felt was to choose a site. I have been to Perambu railway station, I have been to Washamanpet railway station, Tanjapet railway station which was uh, having a huge chunk of land, basically the washerman pet and the Tondia pet had a huge chunk of land where we could propose an another, another terminal. Now if you ask me why did I propose another terminal, right now current situation in Chennai, the Chennai Central and the Chennai Egbo is running at its peak. That is, there are so much of express train coming and going, there is huge footfall coming inside. And the third terminal which is being now considered in Thambaram, which is little far and that is used for the uh, South Chennai people. But right now, over the, in this current situation, the North Chennai people, they don't have a railway station. And when I went through these stations like the uh, Vannar Pet and uh, Tandya Pet, there was something that was lacking behind. And that's when my professor, he came in and he told, why don't you visit the Royapuram railway station. Royapuram, I've never been to a Royapuram railway station before, though being a resident of Tiruvathyur, I thought, okay, why not give a visit? And when I visited the station over there, the first thing that came into my eye was the red color, huge, humongous building in a neoclassical style. That was the Royapuram station over there. And to my surprise, I started digging all the information, the history behind it and everything. And I came to know that Royapuram railway station is the still standing oldest railway station all over India. The first station was built in Thane in Maharashtra, which is right now demolished. So right now Royapuram railway station is only standing station and apart from that if you consider amongst the South India that is the four state this is the first station that was built. Though there were another many trial runs that were done before. Uh, this station was built in 1856 but there were another, another trial runs in 1851 from Chintadri paid to Red Hills. But those were just for trial runs and just for goods purpose. This was the first station that took from Royapuram that, pe that took people from Royapuram and uh, the dest starting, dest uh, starting arrival was from Royapuram and it was destined for Valajapet. 
so it was approximately 96 kilometer journey for the passengers especially so this site brought many cultural and heritage aspect and that was my focal key point for choosing this site now once the synopsis was done the topic was chosen the next thing was to bifurcate into two things one was go to the site and have a site analysis completely and the second thing was doing the case study so that you get to know what exactly you want to design so during the pandemic time uh, the Royapuram railway station was considered to be a halt station basically the station was not in use for more than a decade the reason why was after 1856 the station started commencing there were passengers who were coming and going slowly there was uh, increase in footfall and the main terminal station was shifted from Royapuram station to the Chennai central in 1907 so after that what happened it was then uh, shifted uh, the main station the main trains were again uh, changed to the Chennai Egmore so keeping that thing the Royapuram railway station lost, lost its importance then slowly it became a goods depot station and after that right now the station is right now completely closed due to the pandemic there's no footfall over there so considering this thing I, go, I had to go to the southern railways to get the permission to get inside the Royapuram station personally so I went first to the southern uh, the Royapuram railway station station master room where he told me why don't you go to the southern railways which is right next to the Chennai central you have to get permission from them and that's when you can uh, access the whole site area so if you consider right now the Royapuram railway station is a 72 acres of huge land 72 acres can be utilized in a better way so that there can be proposal for a fourth terminal and uh, to my surprise another thing which I came to know was that Royapuram railway station also was a uh, live proposal site that is it was considered to be an uh, uh, that was a spark for me because why don't we design this and make this as a fourth terminal right now so after this thing uh, I went to the southern railways and uh, after so much of uh, each and every office I went through and asked them for the permission I was allowed I was given the permission to visit the uh, chief public relation officer and the senior PRO the public relation officer so he was the person Mr. Om sir who personally helped me completely and he gave me the permission to visit the site though there were so many constraints that uh, due to the pandemic the station was closed so I had only three days permission to visit the whole 72 acres of land so my day started early morning and I till 6 o'clock because after 6 o'clock there was no abundant light on site so I had to leave by 6 p.m. again so from the morning till the evening I used to venture all around the site and that's when you do the site analysis site analysis is a very key important thing over here because uh, you can't just google the site from the google maps and google earth and just get to know the information you have to be there personally and you have to personally see everything on site what's happening there should be a tangent between you and the site and that's the reason I went all through the site through the uh, bridges to the roads and everything just to see how it goes and if you see my site the Royapuram railway station it is majorly surrounded by two huge bridges that is one is on the Ibrahim Sahib bridge and the another one is a Chennai port bridge so that was a key element for me because the bridges give a beautiful view from the towards the site so all these things were taken into consideration so one on the three days I was on a complete visit to the site just seeing for the site analysis and everything checking the sun path, the wind direction, the climatic analysis, the contour analysis like a railway station definitely needs to be on a high level of ground it shouldn't have any water stagnant over there so the contour analysis everything was done properly and uh, once this thing was done the next thing was to uh, check in for the case studies like now I've decided this is my site but next thing what are the design requirements what needs to be brought inside the site what can should be what should be designed and everything so the case studies I started jotting down what and all can be done and uh, my live case studies were the Piranaika Paliam station in Coimbatore then I went through the Uti Kunnur that is a Nilgiri mountain railways all the six stations and uh, I went to Tirichi rail museum and the Tirichi railway station as well the reason for getting into these stations where all these stations are heritage station the Piranaika Paliam station in Coimbatore was an old one of the old railway station which was completely demolished and refurbished into a new completely new uh, railway station for the LMB workers that is the Lakshmi mill workers for the people of those area in that area they redeveloped it and the next thing was the Uti Kunnu railway station again they have been tagged as the heritage buildings my Royapuram railway station is also an heritage grade 1 building so considering these things how the railway station has been still kept intact it was a huge challenge for me because heritage grade 1 buildings are not to be touched by any chance though you can design the neighborhood presence but you can't design anything inside the heritage building so that was a huge challenge for me 
how to design the whole area keeping the heritage building as such so that it will grasp the people's attention to this whole building and make the and just revitalize the whole area so i went through all these case studies i jotted down the inference which i learned from that i met all the uh, station masters of each station i spoke to them how you have kept the station still intact the heritage each and every peat pa parts and pieces of the building was still kept intact the ut station though it didn't have any much of uh, heritage values it was a normal slope roof and but the how the people the signaling system everything was still kept intact the signaling system of giving the ring and uh, giving the ball so that from one station to the another they had to give pass on the ring and ball again so everything was still been practiced even now while the kunnur station it had so much of heritage values over there it also had a train vision gallery also where you can sit in the gallery and see the upcoming the local uh, train the locomotives basically which was an heritage locomotives over there the steam engines the coal engines everything were coming on the kunnur railway station so that was something a special uh, i would say a special luck for me because i've never seen these uh, old locomotives coming and visiting the station so everything was done and uh, after that i went to the tirichi railway museum which was right adjacent to the, the tirichi railway station and that's when my train got delayed luckily so i had a chance to go to the tirichi rail museum and that brought me an idea why don't we propose a railway museum inside our own site because it was actually a revenue generation the museums over there and my own royapuram railway station had the basic training institute for the students so this museum will act as a ready hand uh, live uh, equipments for them for the students to come and see the exhibits so i thought of proposing a railway museum right next to the heritage block so i'll come to the point where i'll show you how the site zoning was done so after the case studies was done uh, i went to the chennai rail museum also in icf which is inside the icf factory uh, i had so much of inference from each and every case study uh, if i could jot it down in a proper way if i would say that um, in railway station there wasn't any proper uh, organization of spaces people are just coming and going there wasn't anything as such so my inference from uh, visiting all these railway stations was that there wasn't the proper segregation of departure and arrival uh, passengers now in the key terms departure and arrival if i am going from chennai to bangalore i am considered as a departure passenger in chennai chennai, chennai central and in the bangalore station i have been considered as the arrival passenger so from here i am departuring and on the bangalore i am arriving so this is called as the segregation of spaces now for example if i consider my own royapuram railway station uh, for the person who is entering inside the station he is called as a departure passenger and for the person who is coming out of the station that is from the he is getting down from the train and going out of the railway station he is considered as the arrival passenger so i need to segregate these two passengers majorly because there shouldn't be any clash in the pedestrian flow the second thing was linking the main station with the neighboring uh, transportation like the bus stop the metro station my in my royapuram railway station there was in a uh, metro station that was proposed till the development of 2026 but there was a uh, bus station that was proposed in the site so i uh, linked with the uh, i linked my uh, railway station with the bus stop so that act as a public linking with the public transports and um, again i told you that uh, royapuram railway station should act as an urban character that it should act as a gateway to the city so that also was kept in mind and uh, in terms of structural efficiency and bringing in more passengers inside then that means my whole building should look a vast a large space should be given so the structural efficiency was kept in mind uh, the site analysis helped me to find out how the natural ventilation and natural light in a diffused manner should come inside my railway station all this thing should be kept in mind now in terms of railway museum if i'm proposing a railway museum and i've been to the chennai rail museum in Chen, uh, icf and uh, the tirichi rail museum and apart from that i did my literature case study in delhi rail museum and the kyoto rail museum in chennai considering all this thing what i felt was there should be a linking of spaces when you go through a museum there should be a story that should be telling you like if you go through the exhibits it should automatically tell you the story and i felt there was an any story in other museum uh, 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 any other stories in the museum so this linking of spaces was necessary second thing was the unidirectional movement you can't bring multiple entries and exits in the museum so it brings a confusion a sense of confusion so there should be unidirectional movement where else where you go through these exhibits and you get to know the story and the third thing is the point of attractions the museum needs to have certain points of attraction that will grasp the public uh, visitors uh, view and uh, i have inculcated all these things inside my design 
and sec a major thing is that a museum should act as a revenue generation so designing a museum in such a way that you bring in more and more people inside it and apart from that the major thing is that you have to uh, reduce the visual clutters inside the exhibit the exhibit needs to be designed in such a way to be placed in such a way that it doesn't bring any visual clutter or uh, and apart from that the natural ventilation and lighting the lighting is a major thing inside a museum it shouldn't bring bring any glare inside your eyes so the proper lighting position the exhibit position everything was kept in mind and uh, with this i started jotting down my basic requirements so if you ask me a design is something that is am amalgamation of your requirements the personality of the site basically the character of the site the heritage and the cultural value of my site everything amalgamated together i brought my design requirements and with this i got into the standards and norms of the railways the standards and norms are very important right now you need to for i had to follow mbc tss norms and then railway <coughs> railway standard norms so once my site analysis was completely done the next thing was the uh, case studies which was again done and I, i got my inference now again i had to go to my site to do the documentation of the heritage building so documentation was important because the heritage building i need to know what are the spaces inside the building so i couldn't document the whole building as such because uh, I, me me being a single handed person to uh, having a 3 days permission to visit the site was a little difficult task so i went uh, to the southern railways uh, officers again and asked for the permission where southern railway officer he told me why don't you go to the tamil nadu state archives pati so that's a place where you get all the information there are uh, books and all the references which is there from 1700 uh, i'm sorry from the year of 1700 so all these things were there inside the book so i went through the tamil nadu state archive pati in egmor i got the permission to visit the premises of the archive pati and i had an access to visit the library also so i sat there and i checked all the books and everything their important relevance to their heritage royapuram railway heritage uh, station Uh, and i got so much of information how uh, i have i got stories of how people used to see that station how there was a story line that was behind it where the people used to come inside the station they used to wait for the train to come in all the story line i got from the potpuri then madras miscellany books and everything which was inside the tamil nadu state archive pati so this information was very useful and accordingly i also got my royapuram railway station plan the heritage building plan from the intact to book also so everything came in a handy way so it was very useful for me and uh, considering this thing the next thing after my case study and the site analysis was a special study in the thesis you need to have a certain special study where you have to talk about in depth about any particular field so my special study over here was uh, heritage redevelopment prison keeping the heritage building as such you can't uh, demo uh, redevelop anything inside it we can't demolish anything but you have to consider you can redevelop the heritage present that is a building near it you can de redevelop in such a way that would bring in more and more people and revitalize the whole area so this was done and then the special study was kept in mind the uh, inference everything was kept in mind and I, after that i got to design my whole area so site zoning if you ask me i the whole land as such the royapuram area it has been uh, bifurcated into two parcels of land parcel a land had an area of appro approximately 24 acres and parcel land b had an area of 8 acres the reason why it was been separated because of the newly developed loco shed over there so royapuram had a newly developed loco shed where the uh, loco engines has to be maintained has been has been coming here for the maintenance so that is a newly developed area and i couldn't uh, touch that area so it was something like designing this area keeping in mind the heritage building aspect designing for the terminal building also keeping in mind the loco shed nearby and the parcel land b which is also needs to be developed for the future expansion purpose so all these design constraints and challenges everything were there which needs to be brought down in narrow, narrow down to the design to the design designing process so starting with the site zoning i started to zone my site in such a way that i bring in the concept so my concept from the starting was the threshold that is the liminal spaces if you see a threshold is something that acts as a barrier between one space to the other so my concept was liminality in architecture where there will be a threshold and a transition so if you see a railway station the heritage building if you see there is three different stages if you see through the heritage railway museum sorry rail, uh, heritage railway block so there is first there is a separation that is when you see the huge uh, heritage building in front of you there is a separation between you and the building the building is being a vast and you being a small size 
when you enter through the gallery that is through the uh, gallery of the heritage building there is a small transition between you and the building and after the transition there is again a separation that is you board the train and you go so that was the three different stages inside the heritage building so taking this as my concept i introduced the liminality in architecture wherein i bring in small small elements inside my building so liminality i separated in a two way one is liminality in small spaces and one more is liminality in large scale area small scale area in terms of uh, bringing the elements small small heritage glimpses now when i did a documentation of heritage building i found out the there were madras terrace roof that is being that is being used the materials that is being used the majorly the roof shed where the passengers can stand for inside the platform the roof had a tracery that is done with the raw time so the tracery design everything has been inculcated in my own uh, new terminal block so all this thing were uh, in a small scale where i show in a liminality in small scale basically but in a large scale if i show uh, the heritage building is a mirror of my terminal new block building so why did i design it something like that because of the new development right now the heritage building earlier had a track behind the track was earlier behind the heritage building but right now after the development the track came in front of the heritage building so this acted as a mirror for me automatically so i designed my heritage building in such a way i i'm sorry i have designed my railway station in such a way it act as a mirror for the heritage building so that created automatically a liminal passage between the heritage building and the new terminal block and apart from that if you see uh, small small elements like uh, foot over bridge was designed keeping in mind the heritage aspect and uh, after my site analysis the major thing i saw was a site neighborhood context my roof design for the heri- uh, for the railway station was designed in such a way that it uh, matches with the cyber- site neighborhood context my site was majorly surrounded by an harbor on the east side so seeing this thing uh, the harbors had a different geography different uh, elements that is the triangle elements and everything so all this thing was jotted down into my design and my railway station's roof design was done in such a way so that will not only bring in the eyes of the people who are going through the bridge but it will also bring in more sunlight and more uh, cross so after my case study after my inference from the case studies then the site analysis the special study everything my next thing was to narrow down it to my site zoning site zoning plays an important role because that's when you decide where exactly your building needs to be placed the entry points the exit points the service areas everything needs to be kept in mind so when you design when you do go for a site zoning the first thing you do is take a butter sheet and start sketching it so you need to start scribbling on the site like where and all exactly you want to be placed and everything in my site uh, the major thing was the heritage building was kept as it i can't move the heritage building neither i can move i can move the loco shed which is the existing building on site basically so keeping that thing in mind and keeping my concept as liminality in architecture i proposed a new terminal building adjacent to the heritage building in a mirrored format that is the entrance is given on the east side of the uh, road from there they enter the building they have the certain areas which i'll be telling in each block i'll be telling explaining in further uh, of the video uh, heritage building and the museum and the railway station had a liminal passage between them the liminal passage is something that acts as a corridor for the people who are coming out of the train they can walk through this corridor they'll have a feel of a heritage building on this side a modern building on this side the modern modern building having the heritage few features like the glimpses of the heritage building everything busy, been amalgamated so this will drive in the people inside the heritage building again the passengers who are coming out they will feel like okay why don't we go through this heritage building so this site zoning was majorly done in such a way where my heritage building was surrounded by the terminal building on the adjacent side right next to it was my uh, railway museum block was been designed the museum block was designed in such a way that uh, there was a central open space where people from the road they can see the first focal point that comes is the heritage building block so there was a circular uh, central open space that was designed the heritage building was over and right next to it was a museum and this side was the garden of exile so all this thing was designed in such a way that will act as a central focal element of my heritage building uh considering coming to the each and every block the first block over here which i would like to discuss is the railway terminal block now railway terminal block needs to be designed in a majorly in a functional matter functional manner first because it is where major crowd is going to come and get out so to keep these things in mind the first thing was the pedestrian circulation which i considered from my inference in the case study so the railways norms has designed a new thing where you can bring in a new platform or a new uh, 
फ्लोर अबव द रेलवे ट्रैक्स सो दिस विल क्रिएट मोर लार्ज स्पेस एरिया फॉर द पैसेंजर्स टू टेक रेस्ट एंड टू हैव अ लॉन्च एरिया एक्सेट्रा सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज द एयर स्पेस एयर स्पेस इज डिफाइंड एज समथिंग अ प्लेटफॉर्म और अ फ्लोर राइट अबव द रेलवे ट्रैक्स considering all the norms and everything through the railway indian railway standards and norms i designed in such a way where my departure passenger when they enter the railway station there is an unpaid zone where you get your tickets then there is a paid zone where uh, you need to show your ticket now from here there are two passengers one is a local passenger who will go through the platform 1 and 2 which is dedicated for my local trains now if you see in my railway station there are five major platforms platform 1 and 2 is designed for the local people that is for the mrts train so there is a frequency of every 7 to 10 minutes the local train comes and goes so this won't hide my heritage building which is right next to the track the heritage uh, every 7 minutes there's a train moving so there's a chance that people can see the heritage building if i propose my express train on the platform 1 the express train will definitely stand for 30 to 45 minutes hiding my heritage view so keeping these things in mind i propose platform 1 and 2 for local trains platform 3 and 4 for the express train where express trains like kakinada express the bhuvaneshwar express used to stand over there and the platform 5 is dedicated separately for the goods train where since i have a chennai port right next to it it definitely needs to have a separate commercial track line so this goods train was proposed so uh, now considering now i i entered the railway station uh, i get my ticket local train people the local people who are going through the local trains they can go through the platform 1 and 2 they have a proper escalator and the sub pedestrian pathways that is subway basically they can go normally now for the passengers for the departure passenger who is going from one city to another for example i am a person i am getting inside the railway station i have a ticket to kakinada ex- uh, station so i go to the railway station inside the paid zone where i have to climb up the escalator and go to the first floor of my railway station first floor of the railway station has all the lounge area the recreational areas the areas where they can sit they have a proper views around the whole site the top view of the heritage building everything is designed in the top floor that is the first floor of the railway station so the departure passenger he climbs up and goes to the first floor of the station he waits for he waits there for the train and once the train arrives he has to get down through the escalator there is a dedicated separate escalator for the platform 3 and platform 4 design now in this way what happens is i have segregated my departure and the arrival passengers how departure uh, passenger they'll be in the first floor as soon as the train comes the arrival passengers will get down on the platform they'll go through the sub pedestrian pathway which is de- uh, designed separately so they'll get down through the station and get out of the uh, they'll go out of the station or they can go through the railway museum block to see the exhibits so this is designed separating the departure and the arrival people which was a huge success because there won't be any clash in the pedestrian flow again uh, in the first floor level of the tra- uh, railway station i have also proposed the high skyline skyline is i would like to define it as an liminal passages again inside my railway station so it acts as a fo- one skyline one will act as a folded arches so the passengers who are waiting for the train they can go through these landscaped areas which has beautiful folded arches so they will again bring in the few few elements of the heritage buildings and everything and apart from that uh, my loco shed if i i told you already before also uh, during the site analysis the loco shed played an important role it actually act, uh, acted as a hindrance for me so uh, i designed a uh, railway uh, locomotive viewing gallery where the passengers were waiting for the train there will be a stepped gallery where they can sit and there's a huge glass window through this glass window they can see the loco shed where every 7 to 10 minutes there is a loco engine coming inside the loco shed so the people can sit and have a view of the engines coming and going the sound of the locomotive engines and everything so all this thing considering my design challenges and constraints were kept in mind and i was designed my railway station in such a way now next comes the railway museum block uh railway museum block again there is a connection from the railway station to the museum so the for, for the passengers to see the museum exhibit apart from that i have also designed a separate entry for the general public who wants to visit the museum and just to have a glance so the railway museum was designed keeping in mind the aesthetic aspects of the heritage building now if you see uh, whenever you go through a museum there needs to be a story without the story there won't be any fun seeing the museum so this uh, story line was created inside the museum in terms of flowing through the spaces so as soon as you enter the museum there is a timeline gallery that shows a beautiful exhibits in a curved way so if you sit in a railway station if you sit in a train basically a train moves in a curved way straight way pathway so uh, this 
journey through the museum is also something like you're going through the railways that is through the trains and the second thing is after this uh, timeline gallery there is a serial vision gallery that is that acts as a tunnel so it feels like you're going through a tunnel inside the vision and each serial vision gallery has a certain exhibits so that again tells a separate story about the railway industry so once this is completed there is a huge museum ramp that goes to the first floor now this museum ramp is covered through a uh, arched uh, arched roof which has a natural light diff diffuse light that is entering to this arched uh, roof so this is also designed keeping in mind the roof of a railway as soon as as you climb through this ramp you will feel like you're climbing through an uh, a bogey or a wagon of a railway so this is how it has been designed keeping in mind the aesthetic aspect and bringing in the live concept of an railways with the heritage glimpses also for example providing the madras terrace roof inside my railway museum with natural light getting inside the promenades now promenades are something that acts as a central open area inside my rail museum where huge real life exhibits the old locomotives which i found out when i went through the case studies i found out that there are certain locomotives that are still kept they have been not used so why not bring these locomotives inside my rail museum and kept it as an exhibit again showing some side of uh, the heritage values inside the museum so all this thing was kept was kept inside the promenade and the promenade had huge arches these arches were derived from my heritage building because my heritage building's facade was completely designed in such a way it had complete arches so these were replicated in my heritage railway museum as well now as soon as you come down from the railway museum you go through the heritage block that is the heritage railway museum sorry Ra heritage railway block so that block is again needs to be revitalized so uh, what i did was i proposed a uh, ticket counting machine over the ticket machine ticket vending machine over there where people can get a ticket they can board the local train as soon as they visit the railway museum so this will regenerate it will also revitalize the heritage block now as soon as there was a story when i read through the tamil nadu state archive pati that people in those days they used to wait for the train the steam engine used to come there was a smoke and uh, all the steams that, that used to go through the building so this concept was again i derived it and i proposed a real life railway track right next to my heritage building where there will be a heritage a railway hold uh, wagon that will be standing over there and the people can have a look at it the transition between the railway station the heritage railway station to the heritage train so these transitions were kept in mind and keeping in mind the liminality as a concept after moving through this is the garden of exile it is an landscaped area with a central open space having a kal mandapam kal mandapam is something the royapuram has lost its decade it was some uh, it was an open area that is an open market in the royapuram area which is right now been encroached so why not propose an open area inside my own site so that bringing more it will be uh, bring in more uh, recreational purpose for the people of royapuram and in inner around in and around areas so after this central open area that is the garden of exile there where the old railway railway bodies and everything were kept in a angular manner so why because to bring in the different perception of the railway bodies that is you climb through this garden of exile it is a each step step area if you climb above the railway uh, engines the railway, railway wagons have been positioned in such a way that you will feel that you will get a different perspective dif different perception of the each body so this was designed and after that the it, i also proposed for a railway auditorium right next to the garden of exile railway auditorium is necessary because my site had a basic training institute on the parcel land b the parcel land b is majorly used by the railway authorities people where there is a, a railway uh, officials who will be working there will be an annexure building that is another uh, railway station will be coming right next to the main terminal building that will be connecting both the buildings so everything was designed in such a way keeping in mind and the auditorium was also proposed so in general the railway station's roof was designed keeping in mind the neighborhood context and the railway museum roof is designed keeping in with uh, keeping in mind with the heritage buildings concept so everything was designed and uh, with this what i learned from this thesis is that uh, there are design challenges and constraints that needs to be uh, overcome and this is what i overcame and this will help me in my real time uh, execution as well if i am on a site and there is some site constraints i site constraints i need to challenge i need to face those challenges and come out with the challenge so this is what i learned from this thesis 
and apart from that many of my juniors and seniors they ask like railway station what are you going to design in that so railway station if you ask it is a it has a huge future scope because railway station right now they are comp competing with the state of art airports basically so every railway station right now is been slowly been redeveloped the rlda that is the railway land development authority it's bringing slowly step by step redeveloping the new railway stations and the heritage buildings as well so this was the major thing which i learned from it at last i would like to thank the thali foundation who brought me into this field and who helped me express my design journey a huge thank to thali foundation and uh, a special thank to my college management who supported me everything the professor the staff non teaching staff everyone and a huge thank to my professor architect vignesh sir who helped me throughout my thesis journey throughout my architecture journey as well and a huge thanks to the railway uh, authorities who gave me the permission the cpro and the senior pro om sir for helping me granting me the permission uh, thanks to my parents my mom dad my sisters who helped me through the uh, thesis journey and my architecture journey uh, also my friends who helped me throughout my journey as well so with this i conclude uh, hoping for the best thesis from your side as well major challenge was that uh, if you if i had taken any other building typology be it a mall design a restaurant design a hotel design there would be some kind of uh, design that is all, already there online but for a railway station in terms of indian context there wasn't any planning or any reference i could get everything was through my visual only everything was through my live case studies only i visited almost every station in you know, i went to chennai central i went to chennai egmo tirichi everything i sat there and i noted on each and everything what are the transition that is occurring what are the people different user analysis how many authorities are there what are kind of rooms are there in, in fact the railway station in, in themselves have an uh, judicial body that is they have a magistrate court inside the railway station they have a two separate uh, railway police body that is grp and rpf grp is the government railway police that is used that, that maintains only the railway station building and rpf is something who will be traveling with you along with the train journey they are, the if you see if you are going through a train journey and if you find a police officer inside a train then that person is an rpf he is under the central government and grp is under the state government so everything when i sat there everything i got you know because there wasn't anything inside the book inside the uh, railway norms were anything particular everything was through my live case studies only so this was a huge challenge for me to sit and do because i didn't have any ready hand designs with me so this was a huge challenge i would say yes i have addressed in terms of first thing is that what i learned is that different building typologies where if you go to a mall you stay there for a long time you go to you uh, purchase some uh, shopping you go to the cinema theater you go to a hospital to visit a doctor you have you design a residence for yourself or for someone else so that's a long time process where you sit but railway station is something where i had to produce a great impact for a short duration you come inside the railway station you wait for the train you board the train so in that short duration i need to design in such a way that will create a great impact and these were this was the thing which i inculcated in my design as well uh, bringing in for example in my ground floor railway station in the platform body i have uh, designed in such a way keeping in mind the structural efficiency i have produced the castellated beams inside the ground floor so if you see these castellated beams are designed in such a way that would replicate my treasury of the heritage building so even the heritage heritage building there was a roof design that had a trussed tracery so these tracery designs were inculcated in my design so not only this will uh, replicate the heritage building but it will also give a certain character also so now for example if you are going to the royapuram railway station in, instantly you see the castellated beams and the tracery you get in okay this is the royapuram railway station so it act as a certain identity or you can say the icon to the city basically so you go to the chennai Cent chennai central you see the huge tower the clock tower that's how, that's how you get it you go to the uh, cst mumbai that is chhatrapati shivaji you get to know the beautiful uh, design that is uh, reincarnated on the walls and everything so that's how it brought the icon to the city okay. also during my site analysis and site visit uh, i ventured around not only my site but also the neighborhood areas also that is the royapuram area the washerman area just walking to what i found was that there was a lack of open space and uh, as i told before also the kalmandapam which used to be the open space for the royapuram people it is now been encroached and it has been used as a market area so the lack of open space drove me to why not design an open space inside my site my own site over here so that's when uh, my open space was placed in such a way that 
this this will bring in the main focal element of the heritage building and also create an recreational purpose as well so the kal mandapam which is designed in a circular format has the stepped gardens and stepped uh, seatings where people can sit have the nat mandapam or the nat uh, dancing and all those uh, cultural activities been ha held happening over there and this will also bring in more people inside the recreational area so that it will again revitalize the whole land as such well.